Hey everybody, this is William from the Godzilla Files coming at you today with a new movie review. And today we're going to be looking at the final film in the anime trilogy, Godzilla the Planet Eater. Before we jump into this review, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has subscribed to me. I actually have moved past 500 subs, which is something I never really thought would happen. I was shocked when I hit 100 and I'm shocked even more now that I've hit 500. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed to me and that continued to watch my videos. I hope you are enjoying them. I really do enjoy making these. So so with that out of the way, let's talk about this movie. So before we jump into this movie review fully, I just want to let everyone know that there will be spoilers in my video. So if you have not watched this film yet, you should go do that now and then come back. But if you don't care about spoilers or if you've seen the film already, keep on watching. With the warning out of the way, let's talk about the film itself. Overall, I did really enjoy this film. I don't think it's the best in the trilogy. I think the first one still is the best one, or at least the most fleshed out film. But I have to say I enjoy this more than the second one. Now I will say say that if you're not a fan of this anime trilogy, this movie is not going to change your mind. It still suffers from a lot of the same problems the first two movies suffered from, whether that's the characters, the animation, or the way Godzilla was portrayed. They don't ever really fix a lot of those problems. But if you're a fan of the anime trilogy, this has everything that you've come to expect and everything you're going to like. Now I do have to say I watched this film twice and on the second time I actually watched the first and second film along with it. So I got to watch all three in a row and when you do that it actually comes together nicely in my opinion. I actually think this is the best way to watch these films. They really do need each other. These are films that can't really stand on their own so that would be one of my recommendations is going back and watching all three now that they are released on Netflix. So the big addition to this film is King Ghidorah himself. Now I have to say when I was first seeing photos of him and the toys of him I was not that excited. I really wasn't sure what to expect expect from him in this film. We saw Mechagodzilla turn out to be one giant city, so I had no idea what they were going to do with King Ghidorah. With that being said, I actually really liked how they used King Ghidorah here. I thought when he first appeared and started attacking the ship in space, it was really threatening. It was actually terrifying. It was the first time in a very long time that King Ghidorah felt like a real threat. The scene was done really well, and it set up King Ghidorah perfectly. Now, when he started attacking Godzilla, that was also really Really cool. Godzilla wasn't able to actually hit him because they kind of said that King Ghidorah wasn't really in our dimension. It gets a little weird and once again it kind of trips over itself with its own science but I think it was still a really cool idea and how to do something different with King Ghidorah. You never see King Ghidorah's body in the actual fights with Godzilla. You only get to see his necks. I wasn't too upset about that. I know some people were really upset about the design changes for King Ghidorah but I don't mind seeing him in different forms. You know we see him with four legs two legs, whatever the case may be, he's still recognizable as King Ghidorah, but they've tweaked him enough to where he is different and it kind of actually fits with the universe that they were trying to create. We also get to see a little bit from Mothra, and this is kind of cool. I like how they use her. You don't kind of see her physically, but more spiritually. You know, you do see the egg, but she's more of a spiritual being, and it's pretty cool. I, I think that makes sense for Mothra. She's always been considered spiritual in some way, or, or a kaiju that's treated like a deity. So this portrayal of her is actually in line with what we see a lot from other Godzilla films. And finally, I just want to talk a little bit about Godzilla. Nothing has really changed here with him. His character hasn't changed since probably the first one. You know, he is sleeping for most of the film, but then wakes up when things start going crazy. When Ghidorah starts appearing, this is when Godzilla kind of starts making his moves. And it's pretty cool. I like their fight in the beginning when Godzilla is actually attacking Ghidorah. But overall, I don't think this Godzilla really has that much of a personality. I don't know. He's just not as interesting as probably the other kaiju in this whole entire series. He kind of seems to have taken a step backwards when I compare him to all the other kaiju in this series. So unfortunately he might actually be the weak link. So with the kaiju out of the way, let's talk about the humans. Once again, they are another weak point. I don't think they did enough with these human characters. And it's crazy because we spend the most amount of time with them. They just don't grow in any meaningful ways. Maybe it was because they didn't have enough time and I do know this was supposed to be almost an anime series not actually a set of films. So in this one we kind of focus more on the last alien race and how they worship King Ghidorah. Again this is a really cool idea but that's about it. They don't really ever go too much deeper with it and I think they could have done a lot of interesting things with this idea but they just never went that route and this just becomes an interesting idea that wasn't fleshed out. The human characters themselves don't do much or don't really add much. They're interchangeable. We're supposed
supposed to care about some of these characters or these side characters, but you know, you're, you're not going to remember their names. And part of that is because they're so generic. So you're never going to get as attached as you should. One thing I've talked about in the past is the animation style. While not my favorite style of animation, I think this is the best looking film from the trilogy and they fix a lot of the mistakes that the past two movies were making with the animation. For example, I think Godzilla looks the best here. I think the way he moves looks a lot better. You know, he feels like he has weight to him now. I think Ghidorah looks amazing. And there's just some really nice shots in this film. It really seems like they hit their stride here in this film. But I will say this, there are still moments where this movie does not look good. And if you're not a fan of this style, I don't think this is going to change your mind. But I have to say, it definitely looks a lot better comparatively to the first two films. Sadly, one of the areas that this film is actually worse off than the other two is in the music department. There are no memorable pieces of music in this film. I can't think of anything, and I've watched this movie twice, and the music did not stand out in any way. And I'm a very big fan of music in general, so I'm always hoping for something really good. And the Godzilla series provides a lot of great music, but this film is definitely weak in this aspect. So finally, when I think about all these things, it really comes down to would I recommend this film. And as I said before, if you're a fan of the anime trilogy, this is right up your alley. I think this movie, this will end the trilogy in ways that you will like and also end it in some surprising ways. But on the other hand, I would not recommend this to people who have not been fans of the past anime films. And that's unfortunate because I really was hoping that this film, while not save the trilogy, would at least make people say, you know what, it wasn't as bad as I thought these movies were going to be. And, you know, I'm not sure that there's enough here for for me to recommend people to go watch this if they've had doubts about this trilogy already. This is definitely an anime first and a Godzilla movie second. I think that's one of the biggest problems with this trilogy in general, but also at the same time, I think this is one of its strongest points because I think this opens up the Godzilla franchise to new eyes and takes it in some interesting ways, some ways that worked and other ways that didn't. Really what it's going to come down to is how you felt about the past two anime movies and and if you really want to see how this trilogy ends. But for me, I do think it is a little bit more enjoyable than the past two films. All right, everybody, let me know in the comments below what you think about Godzilla, the Planet Eater. Was this a film that you enjoyed or do you wish these anime movies never happened? And as always, I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you did like it and I will see everybody later.